In this session, we're going to look at how we can create non-scaling civil 3D labels. After hearing me say that, you may be wondering, why would you want to do something like that? Let's take a look. On my screen, I've got some geometry. If we zoom in, you can see I've got an existing ground surface, and I have an alignment. If I pan this over, we can see I have a profile view, and I've got a couple profiles associated with that alignment. Let's pan down here. Over here I've got an assembly, so I'm in the process of getting ready to build a corridor. Now if we look down at the bottom of the screen, we can see my current drawing scale is 1 inch equals 40 feet. Now that's not too bad, all the labels look good. Maybe though I need to work at 1 inch equals 100 feet. If I change the scale here to 1 inch equals 100, these labels, still not bad. Everything is more than readable. However, if I get down to my assembly, you can see that my labels are starting to encroach on one another. Maybe this drawing is also one that I'm going to have cross sections in. Maybe those cross sections are 1 inch equals 10. If I open this up, I can select 1 inch equals 10. Now the labels on my assembly are quite small. I have to zoom in pretty close in order to read these. Now, when it comes to labels, not every label is intended to plot. Chances are I am never going to be printing these assemblies. For that reason, it would be nice if I could create non-scaling labels, labels that will always be the same size, no matter what my drawing scale happens to be. Let me show you how we can do that. First, I'm going to open my scale menu, and I will select a scale that represents the text height that I'd like to use. Now, at 1 inch equals 40, these are still kind of encroaching on each other. Let's set this to 1 inch equals 30. That's not too bad. I'm going to say this is the text height I'd like to use for all of my assembly labels. Next, I'm going to create some new styles. I don't want to change the ones that are in this drawing. I'm going to create some new ones. Let's take care of the code set style first. I'm going to hover over the assembly object, and I can see it's using a code set style called View Edit with Shading. Let's come over to the tool space. I'll go to the settings tab, and then here under the general category, under multi-purpose styles, under code set styles, we'll find the view edit with shading. Let me right click on that style and I'll choose copy. On the information tab, I will give this new code set style a name. I'm just gonna call this assembly code set style because this is the style I'm going to use for my assemblies from now on. Let me click OK. Now that I've made that new style, I am going to create a copy of this assembly. We'll just copy this down. There we go. Now that I have the duplicate, we'll be able to compare one to the other after I make some changes. Let's select this new assembly and then I'll go to the properties palette and we'll assign that new code set style. If I open this up, I apologize, the menu's creeping off screen. Let me just come down here and I'll choose assembly code set style. There we go, if I hover, you can see that's using the new style. Now, let's take that style that we just made. I'll right click on that and I'll choose edit. We will then go to the codes tab. Here we can see link, point, and shape. These are the three components that make up our subassembly parts. We are going to edit the label assigned to the points. To do that, I'll open the point group. Here I can see all the point codes. In the label style column, I can see every code that has a label assigned. If I drag this down, we can see that all of the points are using the same label style. So once again, I'm not going to edit this current style. I'll create a copy. To do that, I'll click this price tag, and then I'll open this menu, and I'll choose Copy Current Selection. And I'm going to call this label View Edit No Scale. I do not want these labels changing if the annotation scale changes. Let's click OK and OK. Now that I've made that new style, I'd like to assign that to all of these others. Let me hold my Control key, and I'll go down the line, and I'll select these. And since we're working with the new code set style, in this code set style, we're going to swap all of these out so that these labels do not scale. Once they're all selected, I'll click the price tag again, and I'll choose the no scale version. Let me click OK and OK. There we go. Once again, everybody looks the same, but this assembly is now using a new code set style, and these labels are now using a new label style. All right, let's edit that label style now such that it won't scale. We can find the label styles in the code set style like we just saw, or we could come down here. If I go under label styles, under marker, you can see there's the one that we just made. I'm going to right click and I'll choose edit. I will then go to the layout tab. Here we can see how the label style is built. If I open the component list, I can see it's made up of two components, the text label and a line. For the text label, right here we can see the text height is 0.02. Remember the height that I see on screen is what I want to use from now on. That height is not 0.02, it's 0.02 times the current annotation scale. So 0.02 times 30 is 0.6. Let's keep that in mind. Let me close this. I am going to come down to the bottom of this category and I'll go to expressions. I'm going to right click and choose new. We'll make a new expression. I'm going to call this expression 0.02 lock. And then for my expression, I'm going to add an open parenthesis, and I'll say 0.02 times 30, close parenthesis. So that sets my text height to what we see on screen. I would then like to divide that value by the drawing scale conversion. Let's click OK. 
Now that I've made my expression, let's assign that expression within the label style. I'll select the label style again, and I'll right click, choose edit, and I can see right here the text height. Instead of going with 0.02, I'm going to use my 0.02 lock, and that's going to lock the text height. Now, if I want, I could go through and lock some of these other values as well. You can see the X offset for this is 0.02. Let me open that up. I'll use my 0.02 lock. So that's going to lock the text and the offset. Let's take a look at the line. I can see that the line uses a fixed length of 0.04. Let's do this. Let me click OK. I'm going to create an expression for that measurement as well. Let me right click on expressions and I'll choose new. I'll call this one 0.04 lock. And I don't have to get fancy in this case. Let me just open up the menu here and I'll say 0.04 lock is 0.02 lock times two. Let's click OK. I will then go back into my label style. Let me right click and I'll choose edit. And then for the line component, for the fixed length, let's change that to 0.04 lock. Let me click apply and OK. There we go. Let's zoom in a little bit and we'll test this out. I'll open the annotation scale and we'll change this to one inch equals 100. Notice how everybody else here is rescaling except for these labels. Let's go back to one inch equals 10. Let's bump this up to one inch equals 40. After taking care of the point labels, I could now repeat this same process to create non scaling link labels. As you can see, by adding a simple expression, we can prevent Civil 3D labels from scaling with the drawing scale. I used this technique with labels associated with my assembly, but you could use it for any Civil 3D label style. Would you like to explore other Autodesk infrastructure ideas and workflows? If so, please visit the Civil Immersion blog by scanning the QR code or by following the URL listed below.